Holly Coffey, Fine Gael, Seamus Ryan of the Labour Party, Sinn Féin's David Colnan, Independent Candidate John Halligan, Independent Candidate Joe Conway, Ben Notty of Fis Nua, George Hogan of the Workers' Party, and Jerry Kearsey, who's an Independent Candidate. On the board of us, please, for our candidate. <laughs> Next question comes from Liam Reyes. Liam. Good evening. The uh, arts, culture, and heritage added four billion to the national economy in 2009, creating 79,000 full time jobs. In line with this budget 2010, uh, the Department of Arts, Sports and Tourism was only one of three departments to get a significant increase in funding, uh, prompting Minister Cullen to say that arts and culture is seen as a, an economic regenerator for the country. How does the candidates feel about and what policies have they got for job creation in the arts and heritage, particularly in culture and tourism? We must bring this on the independence. Jerry, can we hear from you for the first time on this particular subject? Yes, indeed. Um, I, I would like to see all these supports kept up, um, especially for tourism. Um, so many jobs can be created in the arts and tourism sector. So, um, without being specific, I, I would like uh, money to be um, kept going that way. Uh, obviously, I, I wouldn't have um, uh, great policies on these things because uh, I put myself forward as as um, a funnel for opposition to all the, the waste that went on in this country. That's okay, then, then not a fist now. It's <coughs> very important that we have a thriving arts, culture, and heritage sector. It's important to the economy, it's important to the spirit of the nation as well. It's um, how it might it be done. Well, we have all well, the different proposals. And one of them would be that it's costing roughly 20,000 a year to keep somebody on the dole. Or and in lost tax revenue. So we propose giving some money to people if they were prepared to take somebody on in whatever sector, including the arts sector as well. Okay, can we hear from Joe Tobin of the Workers' Party, please? Uh, really, our policy on, on arts and tourism is, is fairly straightforward. What, what, what they put in, they get double the amount out of it. By, by that, I mean um, that. The, the amount of people that, that are involved in arts, art, arts and tourism is, 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 uh, is fantastic. But our bottom line on it is that um, the money that, that we get from the government in, 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 that, in that field, the government get, get back in double through tourism and people going to the theatres and stuff like that. So. Okay, let's have a next question. Thank you very much for that. The next question comes from Mary Butler of SIP2. Mary, are you here? You are. I can see you there. I'll get a microphone to you. Thank you. Just one question, Mary. I know you're sitting there. That's it. I suppose my question really is, you know, what will, if elected, what would you do immediately to ease the burden on working families? Like, for example, there's 50,000 people on national minimum wage. Will you pledge to reverse that cut? And what will you do in relation to the review for the, the prime regulation orders and REAs? Will you promise those people that they won't have their pay cut any further? Because really it's not fair that the, the big issues, the health, the education, the public sector, they all take time to sort out. But in the meantime, people need peace of mind. They need to know they're going to be able to cope in the next few years. So what would you do if elected? Will you reverse the cut to the minimum wage? John Halligan. Well, first of all, um, can I say that the growth of our economy and all economies depends on two factors, external investment, internal spending. There's not too many people externally invested into the Irish economy at present because where would you invest if you were a multi-millionaire? Would you invest in pubs? Would you invest in land? You would not. So we have to generate internal spending. So we have to give people money to spend to pull us out of the recession. Now, people on low incomes, people on social welfare haven't got the ability to spend. People on low incomes don't have the ability to spend. The people that will get us out of this recession are people in the middle income groups. But if we continue, and I really do believe this economically, and lots of economists have earned have said this, if we continue to force down wages, we will force down spending. It's simple economics. You force down the wages, you force down the wages. And really, to, answer, to answer the question, this is not an ideological thing with me. Everybody knows my position, so I don't have to state it. I'm stating with simple economic facts. We have to give people power to spend. There are people here in Waterford. 
I met someone, I know everybody can give cases, but a very brief case of someone that on a Tuesday, they don't have five euros in their pocket to spend. They cannot go into the restaurants, they can't buy their clothes, they can't buy their drinks. So as a subsequent to that, all of these industries, all these home-grown industries, like the Vintners Association, like the, the, the small businesses, like the clothes manufacturers are suffering because people cannot spend. It is a disaster, a, re a recipe for disaster in any economic culture to force people into low incomes. They will not spend, it will sink our economy. Okay, uh, Senator Paddy Coffey. First of all, a direct answer. Fine Gael are committed to reversing the minimum wage because we want to incentivise people to stay in the workplace rather than being on social welfare. Straight up. The second thing is, um, we want to ease the... Sorry, I'll be clear on that. When you say reverse the minimum wage, you yes. mean abolish it? No, reverse, 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 reverse the reduction. Reverse oh, the reduction right, 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 right. the minimum wage. Sorry about that. Yeah. The other thing, we, we uh, also acknowledge that there are working families that are under huge mortgage burden at the moment that would have bought the top of the market in the Celtic Tiger years. Fine Gael has been innovative here, and we've looked at trying to implement a tax relief for those young families that have bought the top of the market and are really under pressure. Now, you'll ask, where do we get the money for that? We will say quite candidly that we will now remove the first-time buyer's tax relief because we feel the market has dropped so, so low now that it's not needed there. So it's the people that are really burdened, as I call them, the Middle Ireland, that are silent but are suffering because they're working, they have hardly any entitlements, and they're carrying the burden for this country. And we need to support those as much as possible. And finally, until we get people back to work, that is how we're going to cut the deficits mainly. And, and that's why Fine Gael's policies are clearly about stimulating the environment and supporting small businesses so that more people are working and contributing and also addressing the inefficiency and the overspending. That's the other area. Okay, David Colanche, Finn. The very first thing that we will do is to start making the right political choices. Because if you go back to the 2008 budget, when Brian Lenehan, as, as finance minister, took to his feet and said the budget was nothing more than a call to patriotic duty, and he stuck the boot in for people on low to middle incomes and people who are on carers' payments and blind pensions and people who simply can't afford to give. And John made the point, if you dip into the pockets of people who don't have it to give, then you create an even bigger mess. And what we've seen is a cut in the minimum wage. That should be reversed. But there are more threats as well. Universal social charge was a very, very unfair charge. We put forward alternatives. We said, why not tax people who earn over €100,000 a year? as individuals, 48%, which is 8% more than any income over 100,000. Costed by the Department of Finance, independent economists will bring in 400 million euro, the same price as what we got from the universal social charge. What we need is fairness for working families and the employment regulation orders. That protects the people on the lowest incomes in this state. And yet what the government is doing, and I would be afraid of what some of the opposition parties would do as well, is go after the people who have benefited least from the Celtic Tiger year. So what we call for as well, why not cap public sector pay at €100,000 a year? Why should anybody who works for the state be paid any more than €2,000 a week? And when Enda Kelly, End, Enda Kelly said he would have his pay reduced to €200,000 or €4,000 a week, when you have people who are living on disability payments and illness benefits and carers payments of €188 Euro a week, it, it is obscene. Leadership has to come from politicians first. And then we have to make sure that we deliver for working families. Okay, so <laughs> Thank you. I just noticed on the, the canvas over the last couple of weeks, and I think it's one of the, the most fundamental issues that the next government will have to address. And that is that I call it a sort of a cavern of despair that's out there, uh, going around to to people in the homes of County Waterford, in the city of Waterford. Pe people are, are very despairing at the moment. There's a, there's a morale deficit, and people are down, but they're not out. And philosophically, from the word go, I, I felt that, that tampering and cutting the minimum wage was going to achieve so little financially, but it was going to decimate people's morale, because you were hitting at the very, very low, low paid workers and you were leaving them really despairing. And I think that is, it's very hard to quantify or put a figure on that. But what the next government needs to do, they need to, to reassess these sort of tinkerings that went on at the margins. Because effectively, what the minimum wage cut means is, is a, a dot in the whole uh, page of, of financial rectitude. What we really need to do is to give some all of the people out there, a reason to believe that we're going to turn the corner. 
And we're not going to do it by taking away money from the lowest paid and the people on the lowest rate. Because what you're doing effectively is you're taking money out of the people who have a chance to spend. And you can't grow an economy by deflating the wages of the low paid. Thank you, Joe. We've got to take a break. Thank you. Thank you very much.